So this is uh, typical of what I do. Um, Obama and Putin and Ukraine and ISIS. Um, I threw in a few Ukraine cartoons here. You know, there's no symbol for Ukraine, and we have to come up with our own. If you saw all those other Ukraine cartoons, Ukraine's a fish, you write Ukraine on the fish and it goes in the mouth of the bear. That was ridiculous. There's no good Ukraine metaphor. So I made her into this kind of a peasant gal because I went to Wikipedia and that's what she looked like on Wikipedia. And, uh, and I've been showing these here this week and people say, she should have black hair. <laughs> and the people say, why is she fat? We're not fat. <laughs> I don't have a good answer to these things. I just went to the internet and I searched and I thought, well, let's make her, I didn't want to make her too pretty because then she'd be like Putin's love interest and that would be wrong. I, Putin abuses her. Um, so uh, I, the audiences have been telling me that this is a little bit offensive to Ukrainians. Is this a little bit offensive? A little. A little, a little bit offensive. Okay, I'm sorry. But, but offensive from the side of Putin. Not oh, okay. Well, good. Good. Um, so I do lots of things with this Ukraine chick because what, what the heck else am I going to do with Ukraine? Um, you're stealing Ukraine's purse. Obama the cop. Watch out or I may choose to do business with you on much less favorable terms. Here's Putin putting together the old Soviet Union. Putin is a wonderful character. Um, you know, I'm limited in the characters that I can draw for an American audience because uh, you can't explain things in a cartoon. You can only comment on things that people already know about. And uh, so I can only use the characters that Americans already know. And they don't know Ukraine's president, so I can't do that. I have to explain it. Uh, I can do the peasant chick, but I have to write Ukraine on her. Um, but uh, Putin I can do, so uh, I do lots of Putin. All the cartoonists do lots of Putin. He, uh, he never wears a shirt. So he said, put Crimea right there and leave room for the rest of Ukraine over there. This was during the Olympics. So this is basically how I work. I do a line drawing. And this is America in Afghanistan, trying to win hearts and minds. Um, this is what most people will see in the newspapers. They see it in uh, black and white, and I design it for black and white. But I'll add color for the internet, for the papers that print color. And uh, the same cartoon works for Ferguson, Missouri. Um, national conversation about race. Uh, this is a big issue in America, you know. With, um, <coughs> shooting black people, bad cops, and uh, race riots right now. This is the news coverage of the race riots. Here's Obama and contraceptives. Um, this was actually a Valentine's Day cartoon, and I draw lots of Obama. I don't like Obama. Obama's very unpopular. Um, what I try to do as a cartoonist is use uh, cartoons with no words. That's kind of a international style. Ukrainian cartoonists all like to use no words. Um, American cartoonists tend to be very wordy, and American cartoonists use lots of labels. And uh, for an American cartoonist, it's kind of odd to draw cartoons with no words. Uh, but you know, I appreciate this international kind of idea that uh, there's a poetry to, internet, to, to editorial cartoons. If you can take the words out, it's much simpler and more powerful on the page with all the words that are surrounding it to have no words in the cartoon, so I try to do that. So here's Hillary Clinton and Jeb Bush. These are our political dynasties. We're likely to have another Bush versus Clinton uh, election coming up. So, uh, you know, basically that's the idea. Bashar Assad is one of those rare uh, international personalities that rises to the level that I can draw him because people have some idea who he is or his, his dad. Um, not many people rise to that level. Uh, Miley Cyrus, um, I don't know, you get Miley Cyrus over here? Yes. You do? Oh. <laughs> um, Gaddafi. Uh, just a few characters I can do that. I use cliches. Editorial cartoonists like to use cliches because they allow us to do uh, broader concepts without 
uh, having to explain things and use words. So wherever I can come up with a cliche that you know means something and I don't have to label it, I try to do that. Here I had to go to a label, but I, I didn't put a label on Angela Merkel and Americans didn't get it. Who's that lady? <laughs> so uh, even when I think I do the caricature well and I'm feeling like I really shouldn't do a label, I kind of have to do the label anyway, and that's very frustrating. Uh, this is dinner time at Guantanamo. It's a Norman Rockwell Thanksgiving painting. And you know they feed the Guantanamo inmates through their nose, and they feed them this insure stuff that old people um, get because it's got all your nutrients in it, and they feed that to them through their nose. You know all this, right? Guantanamo? Yes. 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 All right. Well, anyway, the news recently was that they, they don't just feed them through their noses, they feed them through their butts. So I had to update this cartoon. <laughs> I like to use famous paintings. Um, Statue of Liberty is, uh, you know, a great symbol of liberty and personal freedom. Personal freedoms being uh, abridged by airport security. You know, uh, the way we think of the Mexican immigration. And every time I use a cliche, somebody you know, like Lady Liberty, I do that. I don't have to explain things. I get away from the words. America looks uh, very attractive from Mexico. Uh, you know, there's this expression sweeping things under the rug, and uh, Obama violates our uh, personal rights by spying on us and listening to our phone calls. He just sweeps it under the rug of the Constitution. And, and uh, uh, conservatives don't like Obama. Liberals don't like Obama. He gets it from both sides. Uh, President Bush was a little different. He, uh, he hid everything under a flag of patriotism. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, maybe that's worse. Here's the flag of Mexico. Cartoonists like to do lots of flags. More around the world than in, in uh, America because Americans don't know what the flags are. <laughs> uh, I drew this when there was a, a, a big massacre in northern Mexico. They killed 90 innocent people, the evil drug lords. And uh, you know, I don't have to write Mexico. It's a Mexican flag. You know that's Mexico. Uh, so the next week, almost every newspaper in Mexico had my cartoon on the front page, and it said, uh, S cartoon scandal, American cartoonist disrespects the Mexican flag. Um, and they were horrified. And the Mexican embassy made a formal complaint to uh, the American embassy, and they made a complaint to my editors, at the, where I was working for MSNBC then. And uh, there was so much drama. It lasted for about a week. Uh, but my editors didn't care, and it was kind of fun. But, you know, people are crazy, and this stuff happens. Um, I try to use props. You know, we have lots of debate in America about standardized tests, so I can take a piece of a standardized test and not use words. Wherever I can avoid words and use a prop, that makes for a better cartoon. So, you know, this is China. You know that a panda bear is China. I don't have to write China. I don't have to make some kind of... Uh, crazy label thing for China. China's eating up all those doll, American dollars and then they start to not taste so good. Um, you know, panda bears are China. Uh, I can do a cartoon like this, but the Americans won't even know that that's the Chinese flag. So it takes the extra, uh, takes the panda bear in there. I can't just do a flag. I can do a dragon and people know that the dragon is China. Uh, I can do the Great Wall of China. I can do the guy holding his hand up in front of the tank. Um, here's, uh, here they're fighting over those islands in the South China Sea. And I don't have to write Japan and China because people can, can get that. They don't get Angela Merkel, but they can get Japan and China. Um, and, you know, they're whooping our economic butts. We're falling flat. Um, you know, every opportunity I can take to use a cliche to make a point, that's what I do. I have a palette of cliches. So here's Obama and Osama bin Laden. Um, George W. Bush was a wonderful character and a much better character than Obama because I could do all of this character stuff with George W. Bush. You know, he was he would always say something kind of dumb, and you knew that he was uh, a little bit angry right under the surface, and. Uh, there's kind of a, here, George W. Bush claiming his territory. Uh, his ears grew bigger. There was kind of a, 
uh, groupthink caricature that would happen with George W. Bush, where all the cartoonists would kind of start drawing things in the same way. And you came to expect that the drawing of George W. Bush was looking like this. And if I drew George W. Bush looking actually like George W. Bush, that would look wrong, because you'd look at that and say, that's not the way a drawing of George W. Bush is supposed to look. Um, so you kind of have to go along, um, or else you're left behind. 